Greetings fellow gorehounds and welcome back to Blood Splattered Cinema. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Dracula. And we are currently at the Winchester Mystery House having just seen the latest horror movie in theaters, Winchester. Winchester. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we decided since we live in the area that we would go see the movie and then come right down the street and uh, go to the house and film our vlog, which is very different from our, what we normally do on the show. But Yep. But we had the location. How often do we see a horror movie that takes place at a location near us? So. Yeah. Might as well. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, quick capsule thoughts on the movie. I thought it was all right. It was pretty good. Yeah. It was decent. I wouldn't give it two thumbs up, but I'd give it one thumb up and the other thumb kind yeah. of... Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was a little convoluted. There's a... They take a lot of liberties with the history of the house in order to make a more cinematic experience. Yep. But that also means there's a lot of stuff that I felt like felt shoehorned in. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, yeah. There's a lot of shoehorning. Yeah. Um, but I did enjoy it. I didn't think it was as scary as some more recent horror movies that we've had. Like, well, it was, it was a PG-13 scare yeah. boo fest, you know. Um, but I thought all the performances were fantastic. Um, the lead actor, uh, the guy who was from Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, whose name now escapes me, Jason Clark, I think his name is? Yeah. That guy was really awesome. Um, I really liked him. Uh, Helen Mirren's always great. Oh, yeah. Um, she was great as Sarah as, Winchester. She was perfect. Yeah. And no problems with the cast. Um, some of the scares were a little, like, cut and paste jump scary um, though a couple of them were really good but the, the, one of the best ones was actually in the trailer and that's actually the mirror gag yeah the mirror gag and was I really wish good. they hadn't yeah. just used that in all the marketing campaigns because it was one of the most effective scares in the movie personally yeah um, yeah uh, so uh, yeah I guess we're gonna try to make this quick so that people can do their take their pictures touristy and things so uh, I recommend the movie I think it is more of a matinee than a full price so yeah uh, Got a couple friends, Saturday matinee, that'd be the perfect time. Yeah, um, Saturday matinee or when it hits like Netflix, yeah. it'd just be like, yeah, this is on. Yeah, it's pretty good. I do not know what I'm going to include as an Amazon affiliate link in the description below, but I'm going to include something, so go check down there, and if you click that link and buy something with that link, I will get a kickback from it. And with that said, uh, let us move on to the spoilers. Yeah. Alrighty then, so basically the premise of the movie, for those of you who don't know, Winchester Mystery House. It is a house built by Sarah Winchester, the person who um, is the widow of the rifle company, Winchester. Winchester, Winchester uh, repeating arms. Basically, the story goes, she went a little nutso in her later in life and decided to keep building the house that they bought in San Jose with the idea being that it would be a refuge for all the souls who died at the hands of the repeating rifle. Yeah. So basically it's like her way of making amends for the fact that her family has built a fortune off of guns. Yep. <laughs> and the movie takes a few liberty, liberties with this because one of the things the movie do, does is that instead of being a refuge, it's a place for the ghost to move on? Like, it, yeah, that was a little weird. And apparently she know. traps the ghost. Like, there's a whole lot bunch of stuff where I'm like, this doesn't seem like this is part of the lore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the way the movie says it uh, is that Sarah Winchester, every time she runs into a ghost that comes to the house, yeah. um, she builds a new room for it. Yeah. When in reality, it was that everyone who's ever killed by a rifle just comes here to fucking give her shit. Yeah. And so she's like, hey, will you stop giving me shit if I give you a place to live in this giant mansion? Please yeah. leave me alone. And they, apparently, according to her and her spiritualists, the ghosts were like, yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll work. That'll work. And the movie follows a guy, Dr. Eric Price, who has basically been brought on by the Winchester Company in order to see if Sarah is crazy or not. Yeah, whether uh, she's competent to yeah. hold a seat, her seat on the board. Exactly. And... I have no idea how much of this character actually existed. I'm assuming Eric Price was a real person. He might have been. There's this whole backstory about him and his wife and his wife having killed herself and having shot him and him dying for a few minutes. I have no idea if any of that's real. Yeah, I have, I have no, no clue. clue. No but clue. But they definitely utilized it to create some more cinematic moments in the movie that felt a little arbitrary. Yeah, yeah, they did. They kind of did. <laughs> you know, like... Uh, like for example, the gun that his wife used to shoot him is apparently the gun that kills the evil ghost in the end. Oh, yeah. Which, yeah. I was like, what's the connection? Other than the fact that it's from a Winchester rifle and it's how he has a connection to the dead because he was shot and killed for a few minutes and brought back to life. So he has a connection yeah. to the dead. Yeah, yeah. There's this really convoluted thing where basically he had a wife who also 
thought that she saw ghosts. Yeah. And then she tried to kill herself. He stops her. He gets shot. But then he goes down and she continues to just, you know, blow her own head off. And he has the bullet that was done as a reminder of her. But, 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 but and because it's the bullet that killed him and he came back, the bullet somehow has, like, the magical ability to kill a ghost. Which, okay... But that's a long way to fucking go for that. I also, I, I, I kind of felt like if it was going to be something that got rid of uh, the evil ghost, it should have been more connected to that ghost. Yeah, you know, like it should yeah. have been the bullet he used to kill himself. It should have been like something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like it was supernatural. In, yeah, you know, like give it the supernatural. Because it felt thing. just really arbitrary for me, and it just felt like a way, like we need a way to end this movie, so we're just gonna do this. Yeah. Um, they also include a lot of uh, really cool real world events in the movie. Like they include the 1906 earthquake. Yeah. Um, which, for those of you who don't know, in 1906 there was a huge earthquake in the Bay Area that pretty much leveled San Francisco. Yep, it was gone. <laughs> it was fucking gone. It went and up in flames. And as in the movie, Sir Winchester was trapped in yeah. a house, in a room in the house because of the earthquake, and it took them a while to get her out. And this to me is a good example of things that both work and don't work at the same time in the movie. It works that you have the earthquake happen and you have her get trapped, but the whole explanation that the earthquake's happening because of the ghost in the house was complete and utter ridiculousness. Well, well yeah, <laughs> it was like it was it was like a coincidental event, yeah. which would have been. Fine, except there was definitely. They tried to tie it in with the yeah, ghost. Yeah, yeah, they just tried to tie it in a little wonky. too much. It's not like was it? What, I felt like what they should have done is like as long as that banister holds, yeah. and then the earthquake happens, the banister falls, and now the ghost is absolutely. You know? <laughs> um, and I, and and because they were doing like like this whole tie-in with Dr. Eric and his wife and all that stuff, they had like this subplot about the fact that she built this garden. Yeah, which I don't even know if that actually existed. Yeah, and in the garden is his wife, and it just it's, it was really convoluted, and cinematically I got what they were going with, but I felt like if it wasn't based on a true story, the movie could have really shined. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, done something that was a little more coherent. Yeah, yeah, like, we're, we're yeah, I think you're right. Like, the historical, the, the historical linkage is the thing that both makes this movie really good and limits it at yeah. the same time. Yeah, but, um... That being said, like, there's a lot about this movie I like. Like, some great performances. Um, oh, yeah. There, there's a couple decent scares, but a lot of the scares kind of are just there. Yeah. Well, there's a great the, twist. Yeah, there is a great twist. There's a great twist, which I'm not going to actually spoil in the spoiler section, because I actually thought that was worth watching the movie for. Oh, the reveal of the, yeah. the actual ghost? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I really that liked was good. that, because that I did good. not see that coming, and I should have, but I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really did a good job of, like, keeping you off balance so that you didn't notice certain things. What I also like is that the throughout a huge chunk of the movie, you're, you have no idea if it's going to go the route of ghosts actually being real or not, because there's this plausible deniability of Dr. Eric taking all these drugs. Yeah, yeah, because he's, he's a... He's a He's an opium and laudanum. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, oh, and and on top of that, um, if you pay attention, just like normal conversation scenes that seem like they're boring on the surface, if you pay attention to the background, there's always like a hand like in a window or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's always something going like on. That. And so the movie does a good job of that. Um, so anyway, uh, Winchester, I once again recommend it as a matinee. Um, so Count Dracula, where can they find you? Oh, well, you can find me at Twitter at count underscore jacula and you can of course find me on twitch also under count jacula and i stream every thursday at 6 p.m pacific standard time and every sunday at 9 p.m pacific standard time on on uh both on facebook on twitter and on twitch you can find me at the horror guru uh look up the horror guru you will find me in any of those places and uh with that all said be sure to like comment subscribe and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload and as per usual my fellow gorehounds this is horror guru and count jacula at the winchester house telling you that i'll catch y'all later